Good morning, folks. We were at the Zane State Community College this morning, helping them out again with their robo drill. We finally figured it out. We got the memory thing solved. Um, there's some footage at the end here. We're editing in a chip break, which I swore I wouldn't do. Um, I also need some help. We got a really poor surface finish with the um, with the parallel tool path, and I think it's probably just a feeds and speeds thing. It just I don't do this, you know, 10,000. Well, only 10,000 RPMs, but. Um, I would love to have you guys take a look and offer some, some suggestions on what we can do to improve it. A um, couple of things I wanted to talk about. I remember growing up, uh, my grandfather just telling all kinds of stories that fascinated me about his business. And he would, you know, he ran a heavy steel fabrication company. But then he'd tell these stories like, oh, well, you know, we were building this conveyor system, or we were doing drains for the highway system, or we were moving in machinery, or we were. Um, the one that really stood out was the, a, a local power plant had a bunch of trees pushed up against river intake gates uh, underwater and they were clearing the trees out. And I think that was the one that kind of made me say, Grandpa, why are you, you're a steel fabricator. You know, why are you in with chainsaws cutting trees out? And he kind of looked at me and said, because we were the ones that would do it. Um, and it, and it and it's a really interesting thing. You know, there's a little bit more to the story. You know, they did underwater welding, so they had, I think, the scuba gear. They had a relationship with the power plant, but um, he had that kind of attitude of, we'll do it. Like, we will just do it. Um, and I think I've inherited a lot of that. Um, there's a very important counterpart to this, which I also want to talk about, which is you have to be honest with yourself. Um, there's a lot of different ways we can take this comment in personal lives and business um, and one of the most dangerous things I think and something I strongly dislike and disavow is somebody who not only thinks they know something that they don't know but they aren't willing to admit it um, it's just been a, a credence of mine I don't care if I don't know something I don't feel bad about it um, I but I don't represent or I don't imply or tell somebody I can do something I can't so take this school for example um, they asked me to come over when the service tech, not from Fanuc, but from the company that services the machine was there. He's a couple hours away. I think it's kind of a pain to get them to come down. It's quite expensive. And he, he was great. I liked the guy, but he wasn't, I would say, an expert. Case in point, there were a couple things I figured out um, that he didn't know. He's, I think, only been around this for a couple years, so I don't want to pick on him. But it wasn't like you were hiring this guy who just knew this machine's in and out perfectly. Um, so the school asked me to, to hire me to, to, get, to do this project for them and it was sort of let's get this part made, let's teach the instructors how to use this machine, um, you know, CAD, CAM, whatever we need to do. And I said, guys, I would love to. It's a lot of like what we do with our training classes, but I don't know this robo drill. I think I can probably figure a lot of it out, but I'm not qualified to use it. I'm not qualified to teach it. Um, but I had seen enough with uh, working with the guy that one day that I was like, I bet we can figure this out. Um, so again, the key there is all, all, sort of an all do anything, but also I'm not gonna tell somebody, oh yeah, you know, I've used robo drills before, we'll get, you know, this stuff's a cakewalk. Um, and it did work out and they were super happy. Um, you, you know, I ran into some problems. I actually used the YouTube channel to solve some of them. I read some old practical machinist posts. I got the manual out. Frankly, some of those problems are, I mean, if you guys haven't used fan of controls, holy cow. Um, Steve Jobs and Fanuc are like the exact opposite extremes in terms of what's counterintuitive. The critics, or excuse me, the folks that love Fanuc controllers, their response seems to be, yeah, but, you know, mean time before failure and robustness. And I'm like, but those aren't mutually exclusive. I think you could build that controller without all the damn hidden menus and soft keys and counterintuitive stuff uh, without losing the structural side of it. But hey, I'm not a fan of engineer. Anyway, um, that's kind of my point when it comes back to, I think some people ask, well, how did you, how are you doing what you do? How did you get here? Guys, it's because I'm hungry. If there's something I can do, I'll do it. We do consulting. We help people with uh, fusion files. And, and why does that relate to you? Uh, figure out what you're good at and how you can help people. We aren't just a job shop. And I would say most of you that are thinking about getting started in your garage, try to think about how you can how you can help help or build, bring in revenue, do work, um, and 
to me, that's so important because it also pays dividends. In this example, um, we did charge them. We charged them what I would consider a full rate for the project. But then the project grew a little bit, um, but they were really happy with what we were doing. And so instead of charging them a little bit more, I said, guys, I'm having fun. Um, I'm learning a little bit. You guys are learning. Um, they're gonna, some of their folks are going to come take our training classes, so we'll make some money there. And I'm doing a good deed. And guess what? We, the two biggest questions that we get are, what kind of equipment should I buy and how do I get work? Folks, this is how you get work. Interface with people in your community, in your school systems, anything from an artist you know, community to a high school machine program to a college machine program to anything where you can get your name out there, do work, do a good deed. Um, yeah, that's kind of, that's to me how you do things and, and um, build a good reputation and do good work and learn. And honestly, it's also having fun. Uh, I also wanted to mention here, uh, there's a lot more I want to talk about with my comment about being honest. Um, John Grimsmo just posted, what was his grind? It was, um, yeah, gr grind 10. He called it, why are we ashamed to tell the truth? And it really struck a chord with me again, because it's just, it's so funny. It's so hard to be mad at somebody or to fault somebody when they're honest. So I'll save that for some more uh, chip breaks in terms of how that relates back to building a successful business. Um, here is, oh, is there one more thing I wanted to mention? Um, yeah, m more to come. Here's the robo drill footage. I would appreciate some help on the surface finish. I'll post the speeds and fees as well as the fusion file in the video description. Take care folks, see you tomorrow. All right, folks, I could use some help on this. We finally got the robo drill. The one, this is the infamous one that has 256K of built-in memory, kilobytes, which is absurd. Luckily, it actually is a pretty easy fix. Pretty cheap 256 megabyte compact flash card in a PCM CIA. Who remembers those? Those uh, adapter. We got the program loaded, so now I can post a proper, you know, adaptive program, but um, I am actually really disappointed in my results. So I will post the, actually I'll post the whole Fusion file if somebody wants to download it. Um, what we're getting is on the parallel operation, it's, it's like it's a tearing. I've seen this before on our Tormox, um, and I'm just kind of curious why I'm getting that here. Actually, I'll show you. It's a two flute, I think it's a 10 millimeter ball end mill. Um, I don't believe the tool is worn out, but I can't just because it's had so little use, but I can't, I don't know that definitively. Um, I'll post the speed rates either in this, in the lower thirds here or in the video description, um, at least in inches. It's 10,000 RPMs at uh, 376 millimeters, a m oh no, sorry, 15,000 millimeters a minute. Um, it's, you know, moving along, but it's it doesn't have a lot of work to do because the adaptive before it has removed so much of the material. So obviously we're trying to get a demo program worked up that shows off the capability of the machine. And you know, the slot looks great. And I know this machine can do a much better job on 3D finishing. I mean, that's literally what a machine like this is meant to do. So I would appreciate any suggestions on, um, on how to improve that service finish.